Hello, welcome to a new video. We are back in my future new sewing room. Sewing studio, not quite sure. Studio sounds, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we are here and the work continues. So as you can see behind me, I have been taking off the wallpaper. Look, previous owners had candy pink striped wallpaper that they painted over. What a shame, because the kids would have loved that. <laughs> Look, I am concerned that I'm doing the right thing. That is the state of some of the old plaster underneath. There was a, a, a few layers to get through. And yeah, I've been busy the last three or four days stripping off the wallpaper. And it's been a bit of a job. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I've done it though. As soon as I found the wallpaper steamer, is that what it's called? Wallpaper stripper? I'm not sure once I had that it was fine it, I just needed that to dissolve the glue but I, honestly they must have stuck it on with super glue <laughs> it was so difficult to get off in places apart from the damp patch by the window a bit brighter here right by the window it's so dark today it's still not cold but we've definitely that nice warm hot sunny spell is definitely over and a usual September has resumed. So it is chucking it down with rain today and it's really quite dull. Anyway, I was saying, yeah, thank goodness for that wallpaper steamer. And some kind person gave that to us through FreeCycle when we moved here. It really brought back memories because our whole living room staircase, I'm trying to think where else I took, took it off. We had that wood chip wallpaper everywhere. So yeah, uh, for quite a few days, there was me with the steamer stripping off the paper. Oh my gosh, I don't know what glue the people used for this paper on this wall. I do not know, but it is really horrendously difficult to get this paper off where it wasn't damp. It came off beautifully on that wall where it obviously gets damp. But over here, oh my gosh, it is difficult. Okay, so you can see now where the fireplace has been plastered up. And in fact, you can see a line there, which is probably where it gets a bit damper from air coming down. I find it really fascinating what is behind that wall. You know, I'd love to know, but I also know it's going to be a horrendous faff because it was in our bedroom when we did the same sort of thing. Anyway, let me know in the comments. Do you think I should knock through and reveal a fireplace or leave it alone and keep a nice smooth wall <laughs> right well i'm gonna have a break now and have my lunch and get back to this a bit later on yeah we did do quite a bit of renovating in this house when we first moved here and this is sort of bringing back bringing back those memories and it feels good actually it feels good to I feel like I'm making a difference and it, it's uh, it's nice to get that, to see at the end of the day the work that you've done. Well, it's the start of a new day. I got this far yesterday. Thank goodness for that steamer. I don't know what I'd do without it. <laughs> There's not much left. It's just sort of this corner and round the door. I just ran out of energy and ran out of sunlight because the steamer, which is currently heating up, that's basically like running a kettle the whole time so it's quite handy to be running it off the solar panels right i'm going to see if i can finish this today that'd be really cool <laughs> Here's a little update. I have finished taking off the wallpaper apart from the top edges because I needed a Stanley knife and the knife was down at Rains. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm gonna start off this in this corner, cutting off that top edge of paper. Hopefully I won't need the steamer, but I might do. And then bought some polyfiller for the cracks. There's quite a large one here. And then the main crack is in that corner there. I'm really annoyed because I took off the paper on here before I, I started to take it off before I realised this was just bored. 
here I wouldn't have bothered because now I've just revealed this crack here so I'll probably do a bit of polyfiller down there too and I've decided this bit around the top of the door and around the side of the door I'm gonna leave again it's probably this board stuff oh this house is a bit of an, an enigma it really is I'd love to get a house historian here and uh, explain some things I mean so this is obviously then a fake wall but this door is a Victorian door one of the next things I'm going to be doing is taking off this cover here I'm looking forward to doing that and like why on earth do we have this curved bit so this is our staircase from downstairs and we've got this curved bit random bit there's nothing behind it there's no chimney there the sta there's no staircase there this is where the staircase goes up into the attic very very odd <laughs> Today I've got the last few bits of the fillering in of the gap, the little cracks. Um, I'm annoyed I didn't get that finished yesterday. Um, that would have been nice to get that got done. But hopefully I can do that, sand off what I did yesterday. I, would, I need to go around the edges getting the last bits of wallpaper off that I didn't get done in the first the first instance around the top edge, under, under here, under this window. I've got the little attachment now so that I can get into those nooks and crannies. But the first thing to do, which I've got to do really quickly, is try these testers on the wall because today's Sunday, I was going to do the Little Green Paint Company. That's what we did our living room with in the dark blue and I was really impressed and I've really gone off Farrow and Ball. Their price has more than doubled since we bought these testers 15 years ago when we moved here and I feel like the quality has gone down so I don't like to support them but we don't have a little green stockist open on a Sunday, so I could wait till tomorrow. But on the other hand, I'm, I'm really keen to get this room painted so I can start bringing stuff up. Anyway, I shall stop babbling. I have just fought with Aragog in our shed to get to these tester pots and my skin is still crawling. Because yeah, like I said, these are old ones from 15 years ago for our living room. So we used to have it light blue in there, in fact, we had it skylight, Farrow and Ball skylight, and I was really hoping that we had some leftover paint and it would be enough to do in here, but we didn't have any. So I'm gonna start with this one because I really liked that color, but I love the dark blue now. I think that's much better for a big room like that, but I'm drawn to skylight. So I'm gonna just give some of these testers a quick go and we're going out for Sunday lunch in a minute, which is a nice treat. And then we might pop over to B&Q because B&Q now stock Farrow and Ball, which I only discovered recently. <laughs> so let's do this quickly. Oh, okay. My plan might not work. My skylight tester is perhaps not going to be the most accurate. <laughs> Well, I've been filling up the cracks around the skirting board. This one in particular is quite bad. And there's a big one in the corner there. Oh, I hate doing the filler. I just want to get on with the paint. So we're back from our lunch, which was really nice. A nice uh, roast at the local pub. And then we went to B&Q and I got the paint. And I didn't get the one I thought I was gonna get. I thought I was gonna get uh, the skylight. I was put off by Chris saying that was green. <laughs> and 
Also by the fact that they didn't have it in stock, you had to order it and we'd gone all the way there. So I ended up with Pavilion Grey, which was this one on the tester, which I thought looked more blue anyway. And yeah, this one is the Skylight, which is also up there. You can sort of see it. Um, I don't know if you're interested, but you never know. It is useful to see other people with their paint on the wall, on the walls. So yeah, I've gone with Pavilion Grey. The previous owners left behind one long strip and one short strip to finish off the room because they didn't do this bit. You see why they didn't do that bit? Because of the wooden framing around the door. But I do hate that corner. So I think we're just gonna go from that corner to the wooden upright bit there. Right, I'm gonna stuff that corner with a bit of the wallpaper <laughs> and uh, fill that up. done all the polyfiller I then buy all of the screw holes that are in the walls still more to do how do I begin this I've forgotten how to begin this do I just start talking <laughs> oh dear you think I'd know how to do this by now well I thought I'd just uh, pop by and uh, say hello particularly to the new folks out there watching this channel hello and a very warm welcome it's lovely to have you here uh, i hope you enjoy watching this new sewing space come together and also of course my art studio which will be all different soon as well so as a little introduction my name is helen and the reason why I need a sewing room is that I have a business called Threads of a Fairy Tale, making clothing from reclaimed luxury fabrics. And they usually have a touch of fairy tale about them. So that's why this room is coming together. So it's really exciting to have a, just a dedicated sewing space. I don't need to, I was about to say, I don't need to share with anything else, but I kind of, it is part guest room as well. So there is a bed setting I have to share it with, but that's fine, I can manage that. <laughs> yeah, so I have to say the the business has had a little bit of a back seat this year because a little bit on a whim, I decided to take an art course, which is taking up much more of my time than I realized it would, I'll be honest. I've always wanted to be an artist. That's one of the things that's been, like a bit of a dream of mine. So that's why I took this course and I've been thinking about whether I can do both the sewing and aiming to be a professional artist. And I think, yes, why not? Let's let's give it a go anyway. So having these two studios, the, the one for art and one for sewing is gonna be so helpful. I cannot wait. Hopefully I'll be twice as productive because I don't need to waste time clearing away art stuff ready to do sewing and I don't need to clear away sewing stuff ready to do art and yeah I, I can't wait there are so many things I want to do um, and like I said I haven't really done a lot of sewing this year so I'm, I'm really really raring to go uh, really excited yeah doing this room has been a little bit exhausting I have to say so occasionally I've been able to sit down and do a little bit of art I've managed to complete the painting that I showed you a little bit of last week although it will be two weeks ago for you because I'll slip in the little Cornwall getaway in between so it'll actually anyway you know YouTube land is a little bit is a little bit off kilter <laughs> babbling I said don't babble Well, sadly, I have decided to rub out the cat <laughs> and replace her with a ring of fairy mushrooms. I just was worried that it was starting to look a bit too twee, I think, was my 
consent. I do like the cat, <laughs> and particularly as it's based on my lovely little Lyra, but uh, I don't think it's right for the painting, mm, sadly. Usually I would film a lot more of the art process, the painting process, but because this camera has been up here recording this room coming together, I haven't had it downstairs, so I think you've got a few shots of the beginning. There isn't a lot of filming of the whole of the sort of end process of the art, so sorry about that, that this time. But I do really love the painting. I think it's actually, if not one of my favourites, possibly the favourite painting I've done so far. I really like the colours. The, I, I feel like the abstract background came came about quite well in the end. So yeah, usually you'll find on this channel a mix of art, a mix of sewing, general creative life, and what I happen to be doing in this old country house. There's a slow renovation process happening, very slowly. <laughs> but you'll see that here and there if you would like to join me for more videos in the future. And also I wanna say if you are a new viewer, whether you're completely new or relatively new, um, if there's any questions, because I know when you start watching a new channel and you're sort of not quite sure what it's about or you're a bit curious to know things that might have appeared in an old video, this channel's been going a long time, do ask questions below. That's, I'm perfectly open to answering questions. If there's anything you'd like to know that, uh, that you're curious about, and that goes for everybody, whether you're new or not. Yeah, if it's a quick answer, I'll answer in the comments. But if it's a more in-depth thing, I'll address it in an upcoming video. Might be interesting, might have an impromptu Q&A, perhaps, <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, get those questions in the comments if you'd like to ask anything. I'm still sounding better than I ever did. Do -do 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 -do. Feeling like a little kid. same colour as the sky and I absolutely love that even on a drizzly day. Right by the way I'm hoping this might be the last batch of paint. I've done two coats or it might be second to last actually. I've done two coats on all the walls now and most of the skirting has got two coats and the coving but I think I need to go over those a little bit in places. Yeah, I mean, that's clearly only had one coat. You can see the pink quite clearly. But I'm so relieved to be on the home stretch. And I've just brought in a new light bulb. Sorry, I'm gonna blind you now. And you can actually see properly in here on this dark day. So I'm really pleased. <laughs> it really brightens up the room actually. As you can see, I went with grey. <laughs> Not what I went to the shops for at all. It was, I think, did I say I was going on the Sunday? I did. Yeah, I, was, I went on the Sunday and they didn't have the blue. I had sort of decided on blue and they didn't have it, but they did have the grey and I'd done the tester and I really quite liked it. So 
that's what I went with. It's, so it's called Pavilion Grey by Farrow and Ball, if you're interested. Thank you for your input on choosing a colour. It was, it was about half and half, I think. Half of you thought I should go with peach and half of you thought I should go with the pale blue. So it didn't help really and uh, I'm still, I have to admit, I'm still not 100% sure. I do really like it and I do think a neutral colour for when I'm making the clothing is not a bad idea. I do know I made the right choice to buy new paint. I remembered as I was painting this, I thought, oh, thank goodness, actually, that I didn't use the Dulux paint that was the peach colour because when I used Dulux in the living room, I hated it. <laughs> there was just too much of a sheen. There is something that the expensive paint can do that Dulux and the more reasonably priced brands can't seem to do, and that's get that really flat matte finish, which I love. I feel like I could just sink into the walls in a blanket, you know, it's just that really nice softness. With these old walls, they're so wiggly and uneven and you just don't want any sheen highlighting too much. I really love having the old walls showing. So I've kept, like, I didn't make the cracks in the walls perfect with the filler and I didn't repaper. I mean, if you wanted smooth walls, you could obviously do a lining paper before painting and I didn't do any of that because I like seeing the cracks. I like thinking, yeah, this is a blooming old house. <laughs> I think I mentioned before, this, this room was built in 1640 and um, I kind of seemed ashamed to then cover up the really old plaster with lining paper. I kind of think, well, you've got this old house, you may as well show it. As you can see, I didn't do the fireplace. I thought that was just one step too far and we did it in the bedroom, which is the other side of this wall. There was nothing exciting. There's no like lovely iron fire insert or anything. It's just a hole in the wall. So I can do it at any point in the future. You know, it is literally, it's just under there. Potentially at some point we might see what's there, but for now we decided not to. I did a little poll on Instagram saying, should I, should I reveal the fireplace or not? And almost everyone said I should. So I'm sorry. I just didn't think it was worth the effort, yeah. And I was sort of remembering when we did the, the bedroom and there was so much rubble and it's not revealed a particularly nice fireplace. We've left that for now, sorry. <laughs> While I'm waffling on, <laughs> let's wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. I, I'm sorry if you were a pe in the peach group. I'm sorry I went with the gray. And it is got a bluey tint to it, which I really love actually. Yeah, I hope it's the right choice, but at the end of the day, it is kind of only paint. I can always repaint it in the future if uh, if I change my mind, because I have to admit, some of you had some really good points. It's flat peach, would, be, would have been flattering, it would have been warm. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've done it now, so I went with my gut. My gut was telling me light blue or a, a bluey grey, and so that's sort of what I did. I hope it's the right thing. I think it's the right thing. Have confidence in your choices, Helen, it's fine. <laughs> I'm so relieved that this room is finished. It felt like it was going on for weeks. I couldn't believe I think I finished it in the space of a week and a day. There was definitely a point partway through this, I thought, am I ever going to finish? I'll be honest, I should say I've finished. I'm not quite finished. I haven't cleared off, you can see all the painting mess still on the windowsill. I, I think I'm probably going to paint the windowsill to match the walls as well. I hope it's all right. You see how rusty the, the tin is there. But I think we used the pavilion grey on the woodwork in the living room when we did that. And then of course I've got the cupboards, which I'm leaving for now, partly because I feel so guilty that Jude painted them and they are pretty. So I'm sort of putting it off painting them because I'm worried she's going to be upset. I will paint over them, but I am thinking, and I don't know if I'm going to regret this because it's a bit ambitious, but I'm thinking about doing a big, like a, a giant painting on the whole set of cupboards or doing a painting on each panel of the cupboards. I don't know, but I'm leaving them alone while I think about that. That could be quite an exciting project. Now the work is done. I don't mind painting actually. It's just uh, when I'm impatient to 
get it finished and yeah I get I get a little bit not bored I think impatient is the word but now I've got the fun bit of bringing everything in and organizing the new sewing room do join me for that that will be next week's video and I hope you've enjoyed watching if you did please give it a thumbs up if you've got a friend you think will enjoy it please send them the link I would really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it already thank you uh, I'll see you again soon take care Bye.